Hello everyone, welcome back to Microsoft Flight Sim. I was not expecting to fly the Curtis C46 today. I was expecting to fly the Boeing 707 that was supposed to be released on July 2nd. Unfortunately, it turned out that without any warning, they decided not to release the 707 and release the Curtis C46 instead. Both are made by Aeroplane Heaven and they have released a statement about uh, 707 on the forums. They say, we know many of you were looking forward to the release of the Boeing 707-320C today. We apologize for not getting the word out sooner, but as we were reviewing the release candidate, it was clear that the aircraft still needed some more work in a few areas, and we decided to give the team at Airplane Heaven more time to ensure a high quality release. We don't have a specific date yet, but the plan is to release the 707 alongside, alongside sim update 16 so that was the uh, the information from the msfs team so all right fair enough at least some quality control is going on a lot of people were pre criticizing the 707 even before release on the forums so it's probably better that they do try to get it in good shape but perhaps based on some of the criticisms of airplane heaven on the forums uh the main thing probably should be that uh, if there are issues, there are always going to be bugs that are found along the way, and it's more important that those get fixed and that there's continuing support for the planes once issues are revealed. Uh, but anyway, uh, so quality control, fair enough, but wish we had gotten a little bit more warning about that. Uh, so I didn't get my hopes up. Uh, it was, certainly was doing so. Uh, but okay. That they have decided to release instead this Curtis C46. So does that mean this is all nice and done or are there still problems with it? Well, let's find out. So I decided to get it. I do have the premium version or whatever it's called of uh, Flight Sim. So I paid 10 bucks for it at the marketplace. And I'm going to fly out of Jamaica. Jamaica is currently getting pounded by Hurricane Beryl. And we're going to check that out. Thankfully, Hurricane Beryl has weakened a bit. I think that this is an interesting plane to fly into the hurricane with. And we'll see how it holds up. I have tried it out before. And interestingly, my engine quit. So is there engine failure with it? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I was pushing the engines hard because uh, actually I was heading out to the hurricane earlier. Uh, while I was closer to the Dominican Republic and that was a longer flight so I was trying to go as fast as possible and this time I'll be, I'll be a little bit more cautious I'm not entirely sure about the engine modeling or whether it does failures or not a lot of these local legends and famous flyers don't uh, but I looked at the manual and it didn't say specifically I just know that my engine sort of died. It could be could have been a fuel feed issue. I'm not too sure about the fuel feed priority with this plane, so that might have been a thing. So there are four liveries right now. They're all pretty good looking, uh, so that's nice. I'll go with the U.S. Navy one, which is the shiniest, <laughs> so uh, and possibly appropriate for this scenario. And we're going to take a look at this hurricane which, uh, you know, is a current event and maybe continuing on. And so people along the east coast of Texas and Mexico might want to watch out. So as it see shows with the blurb down there, the C-46 was sort of meant to compete with the DC-4. It's not that much larger than a DC-3 and not particularly faster. It is a tail dragger. Well, we should be expecting some interesting weather. We can hear the wind. And I'm using this particular mod because for the map because it's got the wind. Well, wow, that's uh, quite a uh, wind in our face, isn't it? 35 knots here. And let's just take a look outside first. Not raining right now, though, according to this. Though, of course, the real weather may not match flight sim weather. So here is the U.S. Navy version. Interestingly weathered. Not bad. Corpus Christi Navy, apparently. So I'll let you judge. I will point out a few things. The weathering on the wheel, uh, or steering column if you will, and also the back door, it's not to my taste, let's put it that way. 
But we can open the door, and we've got stuff in there. I don't know if that can be changed, or whether a change is based on livery. The radio equipment is interesting. There's good details. I don't know about the particular bolts back there holding the cushioning in place or whatever it is. The co-pilot, I don't know what's up with the side of his face, but uh, we can turn him off, thankfully. Uh, there is this remove co-pilot option. So there we have that. And yeah, this is how the cockpit looks. It's not all clickable. I'll just hover over things that are. We we seem to have startup options. Energizer, avionics master is on. Interestingly, the inverters are off. And uh, we have lighting. We probably want some lights. So there's a floodlight here. But that's the red floodlight. There's a red floodlight there, but there's also a cabin lighting option here. Secure aircraft is for the chocks. So we can have a little bit of red and a little bit of the white light. And instrument lighting is red. I'll keep that off for now. Okay. So that's how it looks. Let's take off. So I'll try and boost the engine sound here so you can get a good listen to it. I'll do that in the video editing. Okay, off we go. Okay, gear up. Let's see how that looks. It'll need a bit of trim up, initially. Okay, so we're going to cross Jamaica and head towards the Eye of the Storm, or what I thought was the Eye of the Storm anyway. Okay, lots of people flying around here. Probably storm watching. It's an interesting looking plane. from a certain era. A lot of them were made. It was a troublesome plane for maintenance though, apparently. Actually, I feel like the subtle Technicolor option is sort of nice. But it's messing with the map quite badly. <laughs> yeah, this Technicolor option for the post-processing, for the reshade, sort of gives it the feel of an older World War II movie. We can go for the monochrome look for a more authentic World War II option. I think I'll stick to this for a little while. The monochrome isn't very forcefully monochrome. Sort of feel the tint of things. Six, uh, 50 knots there on the gust. Whoa, okay. That, um. That was a hard gust. Surprisingly, still no rain according to Flight Sim. I was expecting to use the windshield wipers. Oh, there's some. The wipers are right here. I don't think they they will ever do much. <laughs> well, they said 35 inches of mercury is a re recommended power setting, so I'll go for that. 
for the manifold pressure at 35, 2300 RPM is correct. Well, we, well, we've got the temperatures over there. I guess I should monitor them a, with a little bit more seriousness this time. I don't think they're in any sort of bad position though. I'm trying to find the pitot heat and all that business. Anti-ice might be a good idea. Whoa. That was a serious gust all the way to 50 again. But so far it's been gusty but not too strong with the winds. Oil radiator flap. I don't know if 0% or 100% is the better thing. Uh, there's some temperature over there. That even though it looks like it's in the middle, is actually beyond a red line. Carb air. Hmm. Carburetor heat, where are you? Okay, here. Well, now the carb air is lower, I just flick the carb heat on and off. I'm surprised it is just an on and off in this case. Well, this part of the island's pretty high up. I'm at 2,900 feet. At least I think so. It's important to check the barometric pressure when we're heading into a hurricane though. But still, it hasn't changed that much. We're going awful slow. And the manifold pressure is back up again. Yeah, we're going, we're apparently going slow, but I feel like that's just because our speed sensor is not right. There is a supercharger. Oh, there it is, P2E. Okay, coast of Jamaica, well, south coast of Jamaica. Why it's not really rendering the Montego? There we go. Ah! So, on the south coast of Jamaica, we have a 50 knot wind pretty consistently here. Barometer is now 29.71, and we have 52 knot winds here. Climb pretty high though. Probably the sweet spot is about 3,000 feet. Clouds right here aren't too bad, according to Flight Sim. <laughs> according to Flight Sim. The winds will, of course, create the storm surge, which is a big problem. Despite trimming down constantly, I've been drifting up now. Before, I was, like, nearly hitting the terrain all the time and had to trim up a lot. Now, I have to trim down. The wind direction hasn't really changed. Wind strength sure has, though. We're creeping up to 60 knots. Gusts have not been too bad so far. But that might be because I'm really high up. I'm at 6,500 feet. I'll be very much fighting against the wind for a lot of this. It's pretty close to a headwind right now. Well, there's 60. Still within sight of land here. So we know Jamaica is getting it hard. It might actually be getting a little bit cold. It's at the bomb end of the green range for the oil there. Well, maybe slight closing of the cow flaps would be a good idea. Well, here come the clouds, finally. All right, evidence of rain. Hit the wipers again. Wind a little bit slower, but now more obviously gusting. Okay, being jostled a little bit. Let's say I turn off the monochrome. 
so this is what it looks like without the monochrome now. I preferred the monochrome of this plane. This plane definitely looks better in monochrome. But here we are. I'll dispense with it for now. Well, I saw 70 knots very, very briefly there. Going all the way from like 45 to nearly 70. Wind direction has changed somewhat. If it reverses, you know you've crossed the eye. So I don't know whether this is an eye or not, or whether it's just a little void in the whole thing. Unless we see how the winds change. Well, current pressure 29.31 or uh, 993, depending on how you want to measure it. Uh, I think they've got the units wrong there. Of course, 29.31 is the inches. Well, winds have actually slowed here. So maybe sort of an eye. Well, the wind is changing. So yeah, maybe this is the eye. Oh, I didn't want to open that. Close that. <laughs> I'm glad it doesn't uh, spontaneously die when you do that. Uh, we're only 4,000 feet, so... Just got some really fresh air there. Okay, so tentatively speaking, I think this is the eye. The wind speed is just so low here. And the wind direction is definitely changing. Well, there's clouds all around, so... It's definitely... I like from that perspective as well but yeah the wind direction is changing the winds are mild over here pretty broad eye here on the way in I didn't see anything higher than about 70 knots but I might not have been at the best altitude to judge the wind speeds. Of course, you should be doing this in a P3 Orion if you've got one. I don't have one. Okay, the wind has essentially changed completely around and we're getting some 40 knots, 40 knot gusts. And so we're on the other side of the storm. Occasionally seeing 55. More thunder. Got a 70 reading there. Briefly. So back up to the speeds we saw earlier on the northern end of the storm. I need like a wind graph or something. Something that has kept track of the wind over time. Maybe with some smoothing really get a sense of this. But alright, I'm satisfied we crossed the eye. As far as the barometer reading 29.47, I should have gotten a better one. Hopefully as we head back, uh, we'll cross the eye again and see what it is in there. Oh, I saw 77 knots just briefly there. Hey, let's see if uh, the gyro pilot can do stuff. Well, it's keeping us level. Or maybe. <laughs> maybe it's keeping us level, or maybe we just happen to be level. But I just saw 79 up there. On the. Oh, 80. We hit 80. So far, the lowest pressure reading I saw was 29.3. Oh, I saw 83 knots uh, a little flash there so it's faster over here and this is how the plane looks out here in the midst of the storm
So hopefully everybody will stay safe. The storm is going to continue on and it's a little bit unpredictable what happens with it as it passes Jamaica and heads into the western part of the Gulf of Mexico. It seems like it's the eye, but uh, the wind speeds aren't as low as on the previous pass through, but we're at 29.27 on the pressure. Okay, well here I, I'm, we're getting 97, I saw a 97 there, much faster here. We've crossed the eye-ish portion, 94 I saw. Okay, over here it's getting real serious. Well, that's not great for Kingston. 98. Okay, yeah, this seems to be the faster end, all right. So 95, so basically between 70 and 100. Considering my indicator speeds only 160 knots, uh, I'm getting pushed more to the side than I, I mean, <laughs> Well, not more to the side than I'm going forward, but my net direction is definitely off to the left by quite a lot. Oh, we're, we're hitting 110 on the gusts. Well, just that, just briefly, we hit 110 on the gusts there. So, yeah, this is, this is the serious part of the storm right here. I was wondering where it was. It's going to be interesting to land at Kingston. Now it's pretty steady at 92, 93, 94, which is, this is not the place where you want to see that. Well, I'm going to take it off of the gyro pilot. To be honest, given the location of MKJP at Kingston, it being on an island off the coast. You can see the island on the map there. And, and the runway right there. That's where the runway is. I'm pretty sure that's flooded right now. But that at least won't be simulated here. It'll be a headwind mostly, but when the headwind is 85 knots, it's also a pretty substantial crosswind if it's not directly in the runway direction. You can sort of see based on the ocean texture or the Gulf of Mexico texture the way I'm being pushed a little bit off to the side compared to the flight path I would normally have. Well, I have a tough enough try time trying to land tail draggers in the first place. This is going to be interesting. Okay, what's the pressure now? Okay, well I should adjust my altimeter. I have not attempted to land this plane at all. I did test fly it, but on that test flight I I think burned out the engines. Haven't used the superchargers yet, didn't get, in, uh, get to enough of an altitude for that. There is another airport around here, I think. Okay... Well, the, the, the clouds have gotten worse here nice to have a map. I mean, a GPS map. Okay, well, the wind is changing a lot now. Now it's there's hardly any wind, really? Okay, I was counting on actually having a headwind against me coming into here. Eek. Is an airport there? Oh. Eh? Yeah. Whoa. I can't see anything. Whoa. Okay. I don't think I can land here. Well, wait. Where is even the runway? There's the runway. Okay, hold on. Um, <laughs> don't try this at home, kids. 
I don't even believe the airspeed. <laughs> okay, yeah, don't try this at home. Or at another airfield. Line up properly with runways. Don't don't do what I do. My indicator speed's like tiny. This is my first time landing this. That is a weird, weird landing. It was a landing though, apparently. That that might even be the best landing I've ever done with a tail dragger. <laughs> Alright. Uh, no problem taxiing. So there you have it, the C-46. I'm pleased how it landed, <laughs> despite the difficulties. So maybe it's good after all. But I still want the 707. So anyway, as I get off to the side here, I will wrap it up and say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.